What's going on, everybody? It's WWDC Monday. Time for that swift news. I got a quick show for you today to hopefully watch before all the mayhem starts. And like I said, it's WWDC week. The keynote is today, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. A quick note on that, if this is your first WWDC or maybe last year you were just starting out so you didn't really know, it is going to be a whirlwind of a week. There's going to be so much content, not only from Apple, but the content creators. Like, it's going to be overwhelming. I'm not going to lie to you. So my biggest piece of advice is don't feel like you have to watch everything. Don't feel like you have to see everything. Find the topics that interest you, pick out a few videos, and just go at your own pace. You have to remember, even though all this stuff is being announced now, like, Xcode 12 and iOS 14 won't be officially released until late September, maybe even early October. So you have three months to kind of catch up on all this stuff. So my biggest piece of advice, don't be overwhelmed, go at your own pace and enjoy it. And since it's my favorite week of the year, I'm offering 40% off on all my courses on seanallen.teachable.com. That's the GitHub followers course, the take home project, as well as the iOS dev launch pad to help you get started. So check those out. All right, let's get right into the news. So like I said in the intro, there's going to be a ton of content. Luckily, there's some central repositories that you can find some of this stuff. First up, I have WWDC by Sundell and Friends. So this is John Sundell's blog. He's going to be posting, but he's going to have a lot of guest posts, myself included, uh, to post some content all about WWDC. So this is a central location you can go to, as well as Paul Hudson has put together a re repo here that you see, WWDC community, uh, learning and sharing together. Essentially, what Paul has done is created a repo that, uh, you know, anyone creating content, not just the kind of the, the names you know, but also a lot of new names coming up uh, can post on this site. They can post on the repo and it is organized. You see, we have events and meetups. Here's a bunch of links, special offers, you know, if you want sales, because a lot of people run WWDC sales because it is, you know, it's the biggest time of the year for, for iOS developers. You know, here's all the wish lists. And then it's not fully done yet, right? Because WWDC hasn't started, but we're going to have guides, Swift, Swift UI, UI kit, app kit, watch kit, combine all that stuff. So uh, again, if you want a, a central repository for all the content being put out, this is another great place. And that's uh, Paul Hudson's repo, WWDC community. And as always, links are going to be in the description for all this. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the experience of going to one of these labs at WWDC, but anybody I talked to that has done that has said this is far and away the most valuable part of WWDC. So now that this year is, you know, online, there's a different way to go, uh, interact with these labs. And Apple has laid out the... Uh, the groundwork to how to do this. So one-on-one -on -one developer labs uh, here. So throughout the week of the conference, you can request an appointment with an Apple engineer for personal technical help. Now, uh, you know, you're not just gonna be able to walk up to an Apple engineer and, and talk to them about anything. Of course, you have to prepare, right? Do your own homework, watch the latest session videos, you know, make sure you've done all, all your own research. You kind of want to use them as like a last resort. Like, man, I can't get help anywhere else, right? Um, and then you got to put in a request so requests are taken for appointments that occur on the following day and can be made by members of Apple's developer program, enterprise program, or Swift student challenge winners. So you do have to be uh, a member there and it gives you the times and, and how to like do all this and then tells you how to attend. So uh, like I said, if you do have a very tough bug that you can't quite solve, you've been searching forever, definitely check out the labs. Like I said, everybody that's done this says this is just immensely valuable. Next up, Apple has relaunched their all new developer forums. And I gotta be honest, I hope this is just the beginning because essentially what it is right now is they kind of reskinned the old forums. And, you know, just being honest, you know, you know out there, how many times have you found an answer on the Apple developer forums? You know, most of the time it's Stack Overflow. So I'm being hopeful and optimistic. I hope this is just the beginning and this is a, a start of an ongoing project by Apple to improve and make these forums, you know, very, very viable. Because I do think there's a lot of promise there. However, it feels like all they did with this initial step is kind of a, a redesign. But, you know, you're going to see some updates here. Uh, new tags for WWDC will be starting today. So hopefully we can, you know, start to see these uh, improve. Uh, but again, I'm hopeful that this is just the first step. Moving on to Swift UI, which to be quite honest with you, you're probably going to be very sick of hearing about by the end of the week. Because like I said last week, I expect Swift UI to be the bell of the ball. I think there's going to be a ton of Swift UI stuff. Uh, but anyway, we're not going to talk about specific stuff this week. Like here's how to do this. 
we're going big picture here, right? As we prep for WWDC, uh, you have to change your mindset to use Swift UI. And I wanted to share this because this really hit home with me. I'm currently building my first product in Swift UI as part of a consulting contract. And he says it perfectly in the first line, right? Last week, I saw that the community tries to move UI kit development patterns to Swift UI, right? And he says, but I'm sure the best way to write efficient Swift UI is to forget everything about UI kit and entirely change your mindset. And I have to echo that. That has been so true for me. My first couple of weeks of trying to use Swift UI, I was, you know, just, you know, old habits are hard to break. And I finally said, like, you know what? You forget everything. You're just an absolute beginner. Start from scratch. Do the the bare bones fundamental Swift UI stuff. Like pretend you were learning all over again. And that helped me out immensely. So that's why I wanted to share this article. And I recommend you read it. He goes on to talk about, you know, imperative versus declarative, how, you know, event driven uh, versus, you know, uh, Swift UI being a function of state, how when you change the state, like all the views in the body get redrawn, maybe not all of them, there's some diffing going on, putting it very, very simply um, on the big differences. But anyway, definitely check out the article. And if you are getting ready to dive into Swift UI for the first time, now that, you know, Swift UI 2.0, if that's what they call it, <laughs> is out or Swift UI 2, um, just reset your mind. That's the best advice I can give. And that's exactly what Majid says here. And on the topic of Swift UI views, that brings me to today's sponsor. And that is fellow YouTuber, Mark Moykins and Big Mountain Studio in his book, all about Swift UI views. Now, I personally really enjoyed the style of Mark's books because you have the, the code on the right and then, you know, not only still images, but oftentimes animated GIFs showing you what the code is doing. Now, I describe this book as like a real page turner because, you know, there's not a lot of like paragraph reading, right? You're looking at the code, you're seeing what it's doing. And I always wanted to turn the page real quick to, to see what the next thing like I was learning was. So uh, I really liked this style. So if you want to check this out for free, I have a link in the description to Mark Swift UI View's Quick Start book. And then if you really want to take that leap, he's got a whole Swift UI mastery bundle that you can check out as well. Next up, let's talk about the App Store. Statistics. Uh, iOS and iPad usage here. So as of June 17th, uh, iPhone here, 92% of all devices introduced in the last four years are on the latest iOS 13. Well, the latest until today. <laughs> well, I guess it won't come out till September. Uh, but that's just a great sign because I know a lot of companies uh, have to support N-1. So in the current, you know, meta, probably the wrong word, whatever, uh, is iOS 13 and iOS 12. But once iOS 14 comes out, that's going to be iOS 14 and iOS 13. But with 92% of the newer phones on iOS 13 now, um, it's probably a good time to start converting to, you know, maybe using Diffable Data Source or, you know, Collection View Composition Layouts or Swift UI and Combine. All that stuff that was so cool announced last year uh, that required iOS 13. Well, now you know 92% of the recent devices are on iOS 13. Moving on, Airbnb released a calendar library called Horizon Calendar. Uh, obviously, they just released it. I haven't had a chance to use it in a project, just to be upfront, full transparency. But based on the README, uh, this thing looks awesome. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I, I wish I had a calendar to use this with. I'll probably do a tutorial on it, you know, down the road. But, uh, you know, I love a good README. But basically, here it is. Uh, Horizon Calendar is a UI kit library. UI kit, but, you know, UI kit's going to be around for a while uh, for displaying a range of dates in a vertically scrolling or horizontally scrolling calendar component. Um, and it gives all the features. Yeah, this is a monster README, right? There's tons of pictures, tons of animated GIFs, tutorials, like all kinds of stuff. It even has a table of contents. So uh, this is great documentation on how to use this product, but I'm going to kind of scroll through a little quicker here to show you kind of the calendar stuff you can build. Like I said, there's a lot of images, a lot of animated GIFs that I'm kind of scrolling through to give you an idea. Here's how you can horizontally and vertically scroll through calendars very quickly with this. Uh, there's an integration tutorial, as you see here. Um, yeah, so again, great documentation, great visuals. Uh, I just love this README and, you know, I used Airbnb's Lottie. Uh, a lot. So, you know, if it's anything like that, uh, I think there's going to be a great calendar library to use. Like I said, it is UI kit. Um, but yeah, if you're building a UI kit app and need a calendar, I feel like this might be the go to. Um, but anyway, check it out if you're in need of that. That is called uh, Horizon Calendar and it is open sourced from uh, Airbnb. Next, let's talk about some accessibility here. We have accessibility best practices from Tim uh, Rosner. Accessibility, super important. That's the whole voiceover, haptics, if you can't hear. And he goes through uh, a bunch of different ways on how to add this into your app. So uh, again, this is more of a, a tutorial with code examples. So it's hard to sum it up without, you know, basically giving a tutorial to you. So highly recommend going and checking out the article. And you can see all the various topics he gives, right? Accessibility, hints, traits. Here's all the, all the descriptions here. 
Oh, speaking of accessibility, I don't know about this contrast there, Tim. It's pretty rough. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I've met Tim a few times. So now you have grouping. Anyway, just a whole bunch of good stuff on how to implement all the various uh, things with accessibility uh, into your app. So if you want to put this in your app, which you should, definitely go check out this article. Moving on to AR Corner, here we have the BART uh, map on your Clipper card. By the way, this is unique to San Francisco in the Bay Area, their, their subway. But I can't tell you how many times like I had to go look at what stop I wanted to get off at and I had to find a map either in the car or somewhere in the station. I'm like walking around. So to just be able to pull out your Clipper card and the map pops up, uh, that's awesome. I think I might've shared this before, but I was still impressed with it. I wanted to share it again. Who cares? It's Dub Dub Week. And lastly, I want to leave you with this tweet, a little bit of motivation, hopefully. Like I really enjoyed what uh, what he said here. Sean Peary says, software is such a cheat code in the game of business. And, and this is what, I, I just want to read that first line because, you know, I feel like we're very, very fortunate and very, very lucky. You know, even if you're just learning how to be a software developer or maybe you've been a software developer for years, whatever, like I've said this many times, like it feels like a superpower, right? Like if you have an idea, build it. Like almost nothing's stopping you if you know how to, to program and build a product. So that's what he's saying here, essentially. You know, my first company was a restaurant, one of the worst businesses you can start, et cetera. But this, this is where the meat of this thread is, right? Said he tried building Chipotle for sushi, you know, small margins. Uh, and we've seen if, if anything happens to those margins, like in COVID, where you can't have full capacity, you're done. Uh, you know, 500K to 1.5 million up front, you know, tons of employees, uh, plus the lifestyle. You're running it seven days a week. Uh, you have to deal with all the employees, all that stuff. Uh, now, compare that to software, right? Crazy good margins. You know, you can low barrier to entry, especially if you're the one that can build it. Right? The only barrier to entry is your time and your effort, right? If, like I said, if you have an idea, build it. Uh, you know, you can expand in new geographies instantaneously. He compared that to the restaurant business where you'd have to actually build a physical store, right? You can build a $1 billion company with less than 15 employees. How we talked about with the restaurant, you had to have a ton of employees. So anyway, I mean, this whole, this goes on he, and he summarizes it, right? Build once, sell infinitely. Uh, we know that expand globally overnight. Every improvement helps every customer experimentation leads to improvements. It's, it's a whole thread. I recommend it. But the, the main thing I wanted to share, especially on this WWDC preview, is that we are fortunate. You, we have the ability to build products, right? Like if you have an idea, like build it. Like I, I just wanted to really stress how fortunate we are and don't take that for granted that other people that don't know how to code and, and I got to be careful. I don't want to make code coders sound like we're elite or anything like that, but it really is a superpower. Like I said, if you have an idea, you can build a business with very, very low startup costs if you know how to build it. So just don't take that for granted. I know it's about to be WWDC. We're about to get a whole bunch of new toys to play with. A whole bunch of new ideas are going to you know, pop into your head. Don't take it for granted that you know we're very fortunate that we can actually build these ideas into reality. So Enjoy WWDC. I know I am. And uh, yeah, we'll be seeing you next week with a, a wrap up summary episode of everything that happened this week. So we'll see you then.